A lot has changed since moving into this place 16 months ago. We've almost tripled our 3D printer count. We've hired employees. We built a studio. Look at all this space. So much room for activities. And we put in place some big boy processes to make us more efficient. Let me show you around. So quick facts about this building. This is about 3,000 square feet of leased commercial space that I use to manufacture products via my 3D print farm business and film some content in. Before we moved in, I did a bunch of work cleaning this place up, including painting pretty much the whole interior to cover up some ugly purple paint. All right, so as we walk in the main door, this is really the least amount of progress of the whole place. And really it's just our simple shipping and receiving area. So you can see today we've got two bags where the package is ready to go out. And we've got a good cadence with our mail carrier who knows every day to come pick up the bags in this location. And as we continue moving into the building, we've got one of the main requirements I had when moving in here, which is a way to get pallets delivered easily. And having that has been so awesome. We get several pallets of something delivered every month. So having these two double doors to open all the way makes getting pallet jacks in and out of here super easy. And we either park up here in this location, which you can see a partial pallet left over of some filament that we just frankly don't have room to store, or we can move them into the main space, which we'll show you here in a second. But man, is it a big help. And then just past the doors is kind of our makeshift kitchenette. This building doesn't have a kitchen, so we kind of had to build one. Nothing fancy by any means, just a place to store and prepare food. But one of my favorite upgrades we made a table. I think we went a full year without having a place to sit down and eat, which is kind of crazy. But now that we have employees, it's important to have a place where they can eat lunch or just take a break. You know, it's the little things. And funny enough, I actually got this originally to turn it into a workbench. This is actually an adjustable height desk from FlexiSpot, and it's this four leg design that's like super sturdy. It can hold like 450 pounds, something like that. But after putting it together, I thought that's too nice for a workbench. I guess we need a table. All right, now onto the actual important stuff. This is the first of three rooms in the shop, and this is a storage room. And this is one of the areas that I put a lot of work into improving. As you can see, it's really neat and orderly, but that's not what it looked like even a couple months ago. This room was a disaster, which started all the way back when we were doing some light renovations before fully moving in. So there was painting supplies and just every hodgepodge of everything imaginable. Now, something that I've been really focusing on for probably the past six months is adding processes and systems to this place so we can continue to scale. Because any business reaches a point where you're actually starting to be constrained by your lack of processes and systems. And the storage area represents the first kind of step of that. So it being a storage room, it's obviously where we store materials. But the way we store it is what I'm talking about. Along this wall, this rack represents our reorder point. Basically, any material that we pull off of this shelf is going to trigger a reorder. So that means the quantities of the items on the shelf are high enough to allow us to do business as usual while the item that we ordered is being produced or shipped. It's a pretty basic inventory management system, but we've started to take it a step further. We're actually starting to do something I've wanted to do for a long time, which are Kanban cards. And in a nutshell, a Kanban card is basically an inventory and production management system. So the way this works is basically when you get to a point where you have to reorder an item, you're presented with a card. Now, in this case, I scan the QR code and gets entered into a system which tells me I need to reorder. I've had the chance to walk through a lot of factories and a lot of different industries, and I've seen these put to use the correct way, and it's awesome. It's like the pinnacle of lean manufacturing. I'm using a program called Articards to do this. I'll be sure to put that in the description if you want to check it out. And what's also great about this is that an employee can scan the card, and it gets entered into the system, and I'm now made aware that we need to reorder. So I don't actually need to be here anymore. Whoa. So this is an example of a system that I'm putting in place to increase efficiency and hopefully help us scale. Now, the other main storage area is right next door in this room. Now, this room's main focus is to be a printer repair center, basically. But there's also six printers set up in here that run some of our products. So a 3D printer is a little machine that needs to be maintained and repaired. So that's kind of what this area is for. We've got this big rolling workbench, which has all of the spare parts and tools we need to disassemble, repair, or replace components on printers. Having Kanban cards for this stuff is going to be very helpful. Organizing all these drawers is definitely on my to-do list, but as you can see, we're already starting with some gridfinity. And before this existed, we just kind of did it anywhere, which wasn't very efficient. And also part of the shop gets pretty dusty and dirty. And that plus electronics usually isn't a great mix. So now we have sort of a clean place to come do this. And it's been really nice. Then along this back wall is just some general storage, including one kilogram filament that we use for these top three Bamboo Lab P1Ss right here. So these six printers are an extension of the print farm, but I have them dedicated to kind of unique parts that I don't typically print in the other areas. All right, as we come out of this room, we start getting into kind of the main area of the shop. We've got kind of two areas. We've got part prep and we've got prototyping. Now the prototyping area has gone through a couple of iterations. And this one I think is the one that's gonna stay. One major change I made was put in three mobile workbenches. Before there was just kind of one central table. I found that multitasking and developing multiple products at once is much easier with this system 
Plus I can always squish together the tables and make a giant table if I ever need it. And for those tables, I'm using these Craig mobile workbenches, which are awesome. They're super heavy duty and can support a ton of weight. This is one of those classic cases where yes, I could have built my own, but having something you can just put together allows you to get up and running much faster. And then over here hiding on the side, I've got my freaking laser cart, which was a fun project, but more importantly, keeps this thing organized, neat and tidy. One of the challenges I'm facing is how do you store a bunch of big bulky miter saws? For the time being, I've got these two long racks on either side of the tool wall, but I'm already running out of room. So I gotta figure out a solution for that. But I'm really happy with how I'm able to use this area and get products out a little bit faster than before, just because of that increase in efficiency. And then behind me, this beautiful glowing wall of goodness is the newest addition to the print farm, which is 12 Bamboo Lab P1Ss. I've officially run out of space inside the print farm room, so I'm having to bring them into the main area. So the whole reason for this expansion was of course to support growth, but also to support product launches, where historically I've usually been burdened with kind of long lead times for those initial orders. This I think is gonna solve that. And of course I took the time to make it look extra nice because I'm gonna be staring at it all the time. And speaking of expanding print farms or building 3D printing businesses, I actually launched a second YouTube channel called the Print Farm Academy. Actually, if you go watch the video where I originally showed this place, I posed the question to you guys. I said, should I split up the channel between 3D printing content and shop content? And I do wanna share that with people, but should I do that under Shop Nation? Or should I create almost a second channel where I can document that? And I got kind of mixed results, but I'm here to say it took me 16 months to figure it out. I am gonna split it up. So going forward, all of my 3D printing specific content is gonna be on Print Farm Academy. And I'm gonna keep Shop Nation, more shop focused, shop optimization projects, that kind of stuff. I actually just uploaded a much more in-depth Print Farm tour on that channel. So if you're interested, please go check it out. It's brand new. There's still much more to come from it. I'm also launching a course later this year where I'll teach anybody how to start or grow a 3D printing business. Okay, back to the tour. Let me show you the Print Farm room. This room is more or less the same, but as I mentioned, you can see it's maxed out. In this main print farm room, we've got 30 Prusa Mark III S Pluses and 12 Bamboo Lab P1Ps. And obviously none of these printers are running right now because it would be really loud and it also gets extremely hot when they're all on. Now, one of the biggest challenges with any 3D printing business is maintaining the correct level of filament. So I'm excited to put Kanban cards to use here as well to sort of automate that system and make us better at not running out of material. And speaking of material, one thing that we're trying to do everywhere is standardize. So we have standardized on protopasta for the majority of what we print. I did buy a bunch of black PETG in bulk from a company who was looking to get rid of it at a pretty cheap price. Price. So I actually bought a total of three pallets worth of black PETG, something like 1,500 total pounds of it, which are some of the black boxes you might see around the facility. All right, right out of the print farm is the beginning of the part prep area. And this area right here is actually brand new. This is where we actually prepare all of the flat material that goes in a lot of the dust chute products that we sell. So again, in the name of efficiency, we made a dedicated spot for this because we're doing it so often now. And previously it kind of got in the way of other areas in the shop. So everything you use in this station is stored here. And we can take the finished products from here and put it into our inventory section, which I'll show you here in a bit. The other part prep area are these two tables here, which is where we receive basically all the parts coming directly out of the print farm. So this would be where we do any post-processing, removing supports, and creating those final sub-assemblies that's gonna go into fulfillment. There's lots of hardware we use in this station, which again is using the Kanban system to know when we need to reorder or when we're getting low on stock. So once all the work is done here, we'll move over to fulfillment. Now the fulfillment area, again, is a place I've spent a lot of time optimizing and improving. And one of the things we're doing is moving away from just-in-time manufacturing, where we actually pull parts to build an order, to pre-boxing complete orders to speed up our fulfillment process. Now one of the most attractive things about 3D printing is that you don't have to maintain huge inventories of parts, you just print stuff as you need it. But as we've grown, there's a product mix that we sell pretty consistently, so we can build up an inventory of that and use it as kind of a buffer between the print farm and the fulfillment process. And the result is that we've shrunken our lead times from one to two weeks to one or two days. So fulfilling an order starts here at the computer. We'll print off the packing slip and then the shipping label, which by the way, we just upgraded our shipping label printer to this bad boy. Once that's all done, we'll kind of shift down this way and start building out the orders. And then this long work table is where we lay everything out and get everything packaged up. Where again, efficiency is the main focus, making sure everything is within reach before we make it down to the end of the station. Where we eventually get to the tape machine, which quite possibly is the most important piece of equipment in this entire place. Then the boxes are placed in bags and placed by the front door for our carrier to pick up. All right, one more area that I wanna show you and that's the offices and the new studio. All right, so this is the 500 square feet or so of offices. The first one being right here, which is really a spare desk for my wife to work when she's here helping me. And I went and set up another one of these flexi spot desks. And I just gotta say, I've had several standing desks throughout my life 
And these are by far the best ones. They don't rock back and forth. They don't feel like everything's about to fall over. Everything's beefy and sturdy. We're really happy with it. Also, we got one of these C7 ergonomic chairs from FlexiSpot as well. Super nice. And then the other main intent of this area is a hangout spot for the kids when they're here at work with us. A little table, they can sit down and do their homework or they can sit on the couch and watch some TV. All right, and back here is the studio, which also doubles as my office. Now there's a lot going on in here, so let me explain. So in reality, this space really serves three purposes. One, it's my office, so I've got my desk here. I also do prototyping on these machines along the back wall. And then the third and final one is that it's a studio where I can shoot videos. But as you probably noticed, if you watch any of my talking head videos, this doesn't look really anything like what it does in the videos. And that's because it's all about lighting. I've got the overhead lights on and nothing really dialed in, but I wanted to show you kind of what it looks like in its raw form. I had my good friend Drew Witt come out and help me build this thing. We made a video on the whole process. No one really watched it, but if you're interested to see what we did, go check it out. Also, you may have noticed this enormous 3D printer just weirdly sitting in the corner. This was an Elegoo Ornstorm Giga, and it has like a three foot by three foot by four foot print area. Still trying to figure out what to do with that, but it's here. And that's basically what 16 months of progress looks like. What it's gonna look like in another 16 months, I have no idea. Look, if there's one thing I've learned over the past 16 months, it's that you can only wing it for so long. At some point, you've got to put in systems and processes to allow yourself to get to that next level, or you're just going to always be stuck kind of where you're at. So maybe there's something you saw that you can implement in your shop, even if you don't make stuff to sell. Being more efficient will absolutely make your hobby more enjoyable and allow you to create more stuff. I would love to hear any feedback you have on the latest iteration of my setup. It's by no means done, but I think we're definitely on the right track. Thank you so much for watching. As always, until next time, keep pursuing shop greatness.